here from Destiny House and um, we want to take a look at uh, Matthew 24 today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for wisdom from your word. We thank you for encouragement from your heart. We thank you for our Lord God that even in a season and a time like this you have not left us. You are God of this hour and we are your children. Speak to us now in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Bless you, saints of God, and, and welcome to another broadcast here at Destiny House. I want to take a look at Matthew 24. Again, this, this is just a light message of encouragement. That's all I'm trying to do today, a light message of encouragement. As you look through Matthew 24, in fact, there's, there's a lot of verses. The whole chapter is given over. Um, and 25 keeps on going into talking about signs of the end times. I want to be clear about this from my perspective. This whole chapter is talking to Jewish disciples. It's talking to the Jews. And, you know, at the end time, what's going to happen is that the church is going to be cut off, according to Romans, and the, the Jews are going to be re-grafted. And remember, the 144,000 in Revelation, uh, excuse me if you've not studied this stuff, but the 144,000 in Revelation, they're from every one of the tribes of Israel. And they do exactly what the church has been commissioned to do, which is to go to the ends of the earth 
and to preach the gospel and to bring salvation um, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they've got the same job the church has. So, you know, whether the church finishes it or not, we know that the 144,000 will definitely be doing it. They will be sealed by God and they will not be able to die. So even Satan won't be able to kill them. They will be a special group of people who will carry out this mission. But everybody else they convert, according, I believe, to scripture, will have to pass through martyrdom in order to get to heavenly places. And then the Bible talks about the bowls under heaven. Every time somebody's martyred, it's like their soul goes into a bowl and the bowl sort of cries out, you know, when, Lord, when will we... We be avenged and uh, the Lord says well, at the fullness of time when basically the bowl is full what at the right time so um, that's just a little bit from from Matthew and from Revelation but I want to just I was looking at Matthew and I think you want to are there any, any verses of encouragement in a season and a time like this from the book of Matthew let's read um, Matthew 24 um, and it says this and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, the first encouragement that what Jesus is about to say to us in the whole rest of the book, not to them, but to us. Now, this happened probably in some of their lifetime, including John, who wrote the book of Revelation. So he knew that Jesus was telling the truth when he spoke on the Mount of Olivet. But, uh, oh, Mount of Olives. but, the, the, but the, the reality is we know, because we live so far into the future, that this thing came to pass. And because the temple was broken down, um, and now we have the Temple Mount, you know, the, 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 the dome there, the, the, that very sacred uh, Muslim site as well as a Jewish site in the Wailing Wall is there. But we know that temple was broken down and it's just part of our history now. So what Jesus said, we know that if, if, if the beginning of what he said is true, we can gamble strongly that the end of what he says will also come true. So it's an encouragement to us that the God we serve, he's alive and the words he spoke has come to pass. This happened after his death. So he must have been a prophet. He must have been a prophet. He prophesied things to come and they have come to pass and who's to say that this prophet called christ hasn't prophesied accurately everything else well i'm here to stand and say to you everything he says is true and we can bet our bottom dollar right there on his word so i think that's great encouragement another thing um verse 3 of chapter 24 the book of matthew and, and as he sat upon the mount of olives the disciples came unto him private, privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Is that an encouragement? So, it's not just what happened. He's also now going to prophesy into the future. When shall these things be? What are they talking about? Well, he goes on to saying, And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now, we're looking for encouragement from this book of Matthew. I'm only going to use a few verses because it's only short. But the reality is this. When it says, what shall be the, the sign of the end times and, and the sign of thy coming? Hear this. That um, in, in, in asking those questions, we should be encouraged, saints of God, because we're not left ignorant as to what is happening in a season and a time like this and it's not just started because of this same prophetic word i'm not going to go for it because i'm only here to look at the encouraging words but because jesus answers them and tells them about the signs of the end times we now have information which tells us categorically kind of where we are in the timeline and i'm saying this you know if you cut to the chase we are now in the season of the end and jesus says we may not know the hour or the minute we may not know the second he's coming, but we can know the season. We may not know the day, but we know the season. And surely we are today in the season of his coming. We know when it started, he says, when the olive tree starts again to bear. And it started, he's talking about Israel. When it comes again and starts to, to blossom and bear and, and, and bring forth. Then we, we have that there in Matthew 24. We have clues. What an encouragement from, from Christ. He's speaking not to everybody, but to us, his saints. He's speaking to you, not just to me. It's an encouragement to my heart that God, 2,000 years ago, looked down the annex of time and spoke to me and said, Simon, hey, wake up. When you see these signs, wake up. 
Come on, I'm coming. Get your house in order. Get your affairs straight. Get your lamp trimmed and bright. Come on, Simon. I'm coming. Come on. He doesn't want us to perish. He doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to wake up and come alive and give your life fully to him. In a moment like this, fully to him. I think that's absolutely fantastic. That's great encouragement from the maker himself. He's speaking to you personally and to me. And he's told us about the signs of the times in Matthew 24. You can read them right there. Um, he, he says, and Jesus answered in verse 4 and said unto them, take heed that no man deceives you. I, I, I say that's an encouragement. This word is an encouragement as with all the rest of the signs. Take heed that no man deceives you. Listen, there will come many, Jesus says, who've got great words, profound in their delivery. But behind the scenes, they're homosexuals. Behind the scenes, they're, 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 they, 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 they usurp authority. Behind the scenes, they're after money. Behind the scenes, they're trying to lord it after people. Behind the scenes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, truthfully, is their leader, and therefore their God. And we, you know, don't be blind, Jesus is saying. None of those are me. They don't really represent me. Even if Satan comes, listen to what he has to say. Yeah, take the good, eat the meat, spit out the bones. But don't follow them. Don't let their spirit rub off on you. And I think that's a positive thing. He's, he's warned us of things to come. And down through um, the passage of many, many, many um, verses which talks about various things that we need to now avoid or look out for. But, so I count that as being a positive thing. How about verse 9? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and be and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Listen, I choose that as a positive verse. And I know you're going to think I'm crazy, you're going to think I'm mad. But listen, if there is, make up your mind, you've got to make up your mind as I've got to. If there is a time where we are going to be um, uh, chosen to die for Christ, would you? Would I? Now, many would say you will never know, you can never know whether you're going to stand in that hour of test until you get there. But I say this, and I've said it a million times, if you take a sponge and you dip it in dirty water, when eventually that sponge is squeezed, what will come out of it is dirty. You agree? Listen, I have pre-made up my mind. What will happen then? I, 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 I decree and declare that what I've already decreed into my life will happen at the time when I'm squeezed. And that is, if I'm squeezed and asked to die for Christ, I will die. In Jesus' mighty name. I've made a determination. I pray that fear doesn't grip me. And I pray that faith overwhelms me. And the joy of the moment, like it did for Daniel, like it did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, will be my portion. It'll be my joy to die for him. It'll be my joy to die for him. Just as it has been to live for him. Wow. Can there be afforded you or me a higher honor than to live and then to die for him? To prove ourselves and our love for him. Just as he did for us. I'm scared when I say it. I'm not looking for trouble. But if it come, please God, help me to be found faithful. Help each one listening, especially from Destiny House, to be found faithful. And not to shy, to turn away, to run away, even of death. The Bible says, and they love not their life even unto death. Come on. That's our portion. That's who we are. We're soldiers of Christ. Children of Christ. Arise. This is our moment. Come, this is a moment for those uh, who've been passive and sleeping to arise, to stand and make yourself ready. The commander calls. The darkness ensues. The light must stand. That's us. It's our turn. Come on. Come on, come on. I'm excited that God is doing something up to something and giving us a sign that it's our turn to stand. That was verse 9. Verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. How bad it would be. I find this a verse of encouragement because, you know, you can run, 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 run. And there's so many people who are, who are kind of passive in their kind of Christianity. Well, I can, if I do this and I try to live for God and I fall and I... And I, and I, he's going to understand and he's going to forgive me and he's going to, and he's going to listen to me. There's, you can run a race. You can run the race. You can run the race. 
But the ultimate thing about running any race, even in Christendom, is not whether you start it, and it's not whether you come first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth in the Christ in Christendom. The point of the race is to make it to the end. Those who endure to the end, they shall wear a crown. They shall be saved. They shall hear Peter say, come in. They shall hear Christ says, well done, my good and faithful servant. They shall be tested and, and, and found to be a pure gold. They, they shall be rejoicing. They will be called the bride of Christ. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And I want that to me and I want it to be you. I want that to be up. We will make it to the end. And I've always had this picture where we make it together, linked up, arm in arm. Together, church of God, we're going to make it into heaven. Together. Come on. It's time for us to put aside those things which have divided us. For us to unite in a dark time like this and get ready for God to, 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 to lift us together. Let us encourage one another. Let us bless one another. Let us speak life into one another. Let us forgive one another. Let us encourage one another to holiness, to righteousness, and to make it and to endure to the end together. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Um, let's take another look. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. I've already said to you, the nation of Israel, the 144,000, if you take a look in Revelation, they will do the exact same work. So whether it is the church who does it, or whether it is Israel who does it, it matters not. The point really is, is that a sign, is it a sign for us, the church, as to when we are going to be raptured? I say, maybe, perhaps, but here's another thing. I believe the work's done already. What nation hasn't been reached? What tribe hasn't been spoken to? Come on, is there a tribe? I'll tell you this, as far as I understand, the only people across the globe that don't seem to be reacting to the kingdom of God, to the word of truth, is actually not the Muslim world. It's right here in Europe. It's across Europe from whence the gospel left and went around the world. Now we're the place, if you take a look at the band around Europe, we're the ones who are godless, we're the atheists, we're the ones propagating all that is wrong. Us in America, come on, you can't find bigger, a bigger band of darkness than, than Europe. But it's from here that the message of the gospel went forth. It is us that God used to propagate to the ends of the earth. Everywhere you can think of has got the gospel. Very few pe people don't know of Jesus Christ. So work is, if it's not done, it's almost done. We can say that the end is near because we can see that work is done. And then the other thing is, it's gonna yet still be done by the Jews. This world that way. We are ready. Get yourself ready. Jesus gave us a sign. I see there's a positive thing because it gives us a mission. And in a time and an hour like this, the ones who don't really know, don't bother go to the ends of the earth if you can't tell your family, if you can't tell your brother, if you can't tell your sister. And I'm telling you, evangelism is about to change. Evangelism is about to change. What we've got to do in a day like today, be encouraged things that we still have a chance to see our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our uncles, our aunts, our cousins, our nephews, our nieces, our friends, our best friends, our colleagues saved. Do you know how we're going to do it? Over the phone. How are we going to do it? We're going to drop them a letter. How are we going to do it? We're going to tell them about Christ as easy as we can, as simple as we can. We're going to let them know. We're going to use every opportunity. Yeah, just tell them, if I go, if I go, if one day you, you, you call me and you don't hear me, and you call me the following week and you don't hear me, and you don't see me, you knock on my door and I'm not there, know that Christ has collected me. Know that this thing is real, this Jesus is real, and give your life. Don't accept the mark. Don't accept the mark. Come on, preach the gospel that others may be saved. Remember, Christ first is coming for his bride they're going to be raptured and then the church will still be here the unfaithful the ungrateful the ones who 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 always had an excuse why they didn't come to church why they never prayed why they never read their bible never 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 always always deeper in the world than they were in the things of god but then after they've cried because they've not been taken up they shall tighten their belt and get serious with god and they shall propagate the gospel even then there will still be a chance there will still be a church there will still be a God. And I want you to be encouraged. Come on, this isn't quite the end yet. We're just getting going. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Verse 14. We have a commission, therefore, to reach the ends of the earth. 
But the end of the earth includes mommy, daddy, brother, sister. It includes our neighbors. It includes our community. It includes our city. It includes our nation and the nations of the earth. Let's be faithful in making sure that today we start that commission. If, if, if it's not happened before, start it today. Get your mouth working. Get your heart ready. Get your mind in tune. Get some information in you as to what the gospel is and begin to preach in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Jesus is on our side and we should be on his side. Verse 44. Verse 44 is my final verse. Just looking for a few verses of encouragement. We're going to jump all the way down to verse 44. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. And then he then gives um, this discourse. And I read it as encouragement to all of us. I don't need to explain this. So I'm going to read it um, as I close as uh, encouragement to all of us. I want you to hear this. And I want you to take it to heart. I want you to hear this. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? In other words, to serve others. Yeah, verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verse 47. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Come on, Jesus has good intentions for those who had a good heart and who served him in a good way. Is that you? And if it hasn't been you, it can still be you. That's why it's good news. Even today for you, it's good news. But keep listening. But, and if that evil servant... But in it, that evil servant shall say in his heart, because if, if there's a good servant, there's also an evil servant. Which one are you today? Change sides if you're on the wrong side. My Lord, said the evil servant, has delayed his coming, and shall be and and he shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want you to know, we keep talking about once saved, always saved. Uh, it is by grace we've been saved through faith. None of, it's not a, a, a work of ourselves, it's a gift of God. Lest any man should boast. Listen to me. Listen to me. According to this, this guy was in the house. This guy was given the right to serve. This guy was given power. This guy was given authority. And this guy ends up in hell. I want to encourage you. It isn't your portion. If you've been serving and leaning on the wrong side, change sides. Change gods. Give your life to Christ and serve him. In Jesus' mighty name. We bless you.